that's not no problem saying that. But you have to say, where are your priorities with this money? Where are you going to put it? Okay, if it's a fantastic facade, yeah, put it there. But then the rest can't be as rich and as popular mm -hmm. as all. So you guide the architect with those goals. And so you do that with all of the other parties. Those goals are so necessary. <laughs> 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 A little. Yeah. It's like we only needed a little clap, but this is how the potato brings the energy. <laughs> Welcome to the EBFC show, the easier, better for construction podcast. I'm your host, Felipe Engineer Manriquez. This show is all about the business of construction. Today's episode is sponsored by Bosch Refine My Site is a cloud-based construction collaboration platform that applies lean principles to enable your entire team to plan, communicate, and execute in real time. It's the digital tool that works in tandem with your last planner system process and puts it all together in one simple collaborative ecosystem. This easy to use platform is available in English, German, Spanish, Portuguese, and French, and can be used on desktops, tablets, and mobile devices. According to Spencer Easton, scheduling manager at Oakland Construction, Refine My Site, in my opinion, is the best, leanest tool on the market for the last time. Here's what our users have to say. We've looked at three other digital scheduling platforms and none compare to the straightforward approach Refund My Site takes. From milestone planning all the way down to daily tasks, this program gives every general contractor and their trade partners meaningful collaboration, accountability, and KPIs. Register today to try Refund My Site for free for 60 days. Today's show is also sponsored by the Lean Construction Institute, LCI is working to lead the building industry in transforming its practices and culture. Its vision is to create a healthy and thriving industry that delivers outstanding project outcomes every time for everyone. Check the show notes for more information. Now, to the show. Uh, so we're joined by two guests. Sendere, why don't you introduce our guests to the audience? Yeah. We have with us Mette Hulan, who works here from the municipality of Molde. She's the change guide and innovation guide for Molde Municipality. She's a woman that's on fire. This girl is on yeah. fire. Yeah. <laughs> you said yes. it. Yes, you said it. Yes. And also, we have with us Jürgen Svetsdesby from Municipality of Molde. He's a tech guy. He's driving the change of the municipality and changing the culture of being creating value for the inhabitants. Yeah. So we're joined with great change makers. Absolutely. When Sandra was telling me that we can come and use this beautiful studio and we were getting to get work with such amazing fire starters, change makers, I said, this place is special. And I feel lucky, like Oringe, to be amongst such great people. So thank you for letting us use your house and play with your toys here. They are amazing. And I'd love for you to tell people of the EBFC show, the easier, better for construction podcast. Why is this innovation center so unique? What was the problem that building this a year ago solves? We had Smart Molde, how to, to work together with all of the citizens and together with those who do the real tough work out there and with the academia and we sat before we sat in silos and not together and we had a contact yang we met once once a uh, month once a month yeah and then we saw oh do you do that and do you, oh do you eh, why don't we come together oftener and in the municipality we sit also all by ourselves to do the change, but we, it goes so slowly. So then we out in the Storgata, the big city in Malda, <laughs> <laughs> big street. We just come together and make a change for a better world. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but for a better world and for a better society and cool jobs and everything. So that's why. 
and I'm good with money. So I got some money from external money and then, yes, go for it. Our mayor said, just go for it. That's and beautiful. then it will be, it's been a tough part yeah. now for about half a year. But now we are on track and now we are two employees here. And from the autumn, we are six. Wow. It's growing. It's growing. Change happens slow, mm. steady. And then fast. And then very fast. And then it has, it jumps. It'll have jumps. It'll be smooth. Mm. And it'll just have a jump. Smooth again, and then a jump, and then sometimes you can just skip. And we want to help that change with trying things out, because the municipality can be very conservative. And we have done it this way, and we are continuing to doing it that way. And we want to break that up. I've seen people or businesses doing it a totally different way and being much more efficient. Why can't we try to do that in small scale? And maybe we get it done, maybe we won't, but then we have the experience and maybe some employees in the municipality get a half moment and see the opportunity to do something a totally different way and saving resources for the best of the inhabitants and also for the colleagues on in, in the municipality, because there is nothing more life dreading than doing things that you don't have to do. You can do this or just skip it all by doing it smarter. Yeah, what a very agile city. Yes. Very agile thinking. And we were talking at, at the lunchtime and we said that Molda City, the municipality, is one of the largest employers. And you said it also includes the teachers as well in the schools. Yes, the healthcare. And the healthcare, yeah, it's quite a big, a big swath of people that are dependent on the services here. I think it's very important to understand, like in the ecosystem of the companies and the buildings, that it is can be much bigger than we think. The impact that we have, maybe all the workers don't know how big of an impact it is. Let me ask a contractor: Can the municipality influence what you build and how you build? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, because we're thinking the old way is a good way. So we can, if we get inputs with how to change our thinking about using, reusing old things, make it new again, and not just throw it all away. I think that's the part of the thinking here. So we uh, have to see if the contracts that we have will fit with the thinking, or we have to challenge the government and stuff like that to make a space for it to happen. As we mentioned earlier, one of the most challenging goals that are non-commercial today is the sustainability goal. And if product owners are going to implement sustainability goals in our construction industry, who is the one of the top industries in creating waste and the carbon waste, so we, I think we are 40% delivering 40% of the carbon in the world from our industry. So if we're going to have product owners that have those system then build the goals, they are not coming from the commercial parts. They don't seek risk unless it's commercial interest. So we're seeing commercial interest in the commercial part also around sustainability, but the risk takers should be the governments that sets the goals for the sustainability in the future. Where are we going as a nation? And Norway is there. So municipality is a part of the government and the county is a part of the government. So we need those risk takers to be risk takers. And risk takers doesn't come from conservative communities. They come from agile communities that can handle risk as an opportunity, not as a threat. So therefore, these change makers in the government system, we need them because we need them as scrum masters, we need them as product owners and to implement good, sustainable goals that we can move the industry further into the future. Yeah, that's a good one. And if we think using our imaginations and think five years into the future, what do you hope 
you will see different in this using this innovation center and communicating back with the municipality and just will we see something different walking the streets in the Turag? Turig. Turig. <laughs> will we see something different in the city center as a result of this innovation lab? I hope that we will be a lot of employees, uh, both with you and all over, experience that in Molde, I have an idea. We are interested in your idea and maybe we can get in even better when we come together and things happen. What will happen? I'm not sure. Probably there are no cars in that street over there. We don't know. But what do the taxi do then and some other areas? We don't know, but we hope it's exciting to work with us. We hope a lot of young employees will come to our area. And, and the young children has a lot to play with and experiments also with the idea from them. But we know that we will be a lot more older people here and maybe fewer younger and a lot of the elder one. So I hope it will, we will see a change also in how we do the healthcare. We don't know yet. But there will be changes, but we don't know how. But with use of data or similar things, we can do things even better and also come together. And, and what is the next generation of Tjeneste uh, services? Uh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So we, but we have to have fun and we are hmm. very good here to have yeah. fun. There's uh, been a lot don't... of laughing here. Yes, yeah, it's a is... lot of bathing, uh, bathing as well. Oh, uh, yeah. At Nausta, we yeah. can go down here and swim along in the five degrees water. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to do um, that today? Yeah, we we're going, going to, to dive into Moldefjord. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, are you going to the yeah, yeah. We started this year uh, with, to we swim together. We had our first bath, the 4th of July. No, 4th of January. Oh. I think the 4th of January. Example, yeah. though, for yeah. investing. Yeah. Or test the what? We have uh, 15 smart dumpsters. Yeah, that's the result of what you're doing. Mm. So, that's the first thing. Yeah, tell us more about that. So, for the people watching that don't know uh, the dumpster situation here, <laughs> I mean, unless you watch my YouTube video from this morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the dumpsters in the city center are connected to Wi Fi and mm. powered by solar panels, and they are measuring how much waste there is in the containers and they're also compressing the trash. We don't have to use people to, em to uh, uh, switch the, uh, or empty the trash cans when they, there is no need for it. So now the dumpster will tell when to come and pick up trash. So wow. we save a lot of man hours doing that. Smart um, city. Automating. Yes. yes. That's what you love. I do love yeah. that. Yeah. Automate, we say there's some different philosophies with technology. And we learn from studying companies like Toyota that you always want to automate with a human touch, with the spirit of a human being. And we want to automate things that are like mindless or too simple for people. Very repetitive. Very repetitive or dangerous. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way, a great example of saving, I think. The smart dumpsters could pay for all of this and coffee and tea forever, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and even more podcast equipment. <laughs> totally. That was a great example <laughs> of the smart dumpsters. How far do we have to go before we can see one of them? Just there you can see one. Yeah. 50 meters. Yeah, 50, 50 meters, meters away. Yeah. Um, wow. They're also outside of here. And in the front. Mm. Yeah. yeah, we'll make sure we take some uh, some selfies with the smart dumpster later today, Sindri. Yeah, of course. <laughs> selfie stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a selfie stick yeah. here. Yeah we, yeah, we did. Yeah. We have also an interesting project with if you are 90, 90 years old and yeah. you break a leg and you get to a hospital. And then we need we know for 95% sure what do you need. And when do you get out of the hospital? And what do you need of extra equipment to help yourself and get in training? 
So we are using data in new ways so we can simulate your needs for the future. So that's also a very interesting case. Wow. Because the conventional way is that uh, you break a leg, you mm. get to the hospital, mm. you fix the leg, mm. and then you get home and you need a wheelchair or uh, a crypto. Yeah. Crouches. Crouches. But then you have to apply for that. So then you're waiting. So mm. then you have you can't to wait. Move. No. Yeah, you're stuck. Until That's the regular way to do yeah. it. Mm. We want to make it better by using large data and making systems that are more user friendly. Because that's where, not very friendly, and that's and even if you hit your head, also you won't be able to apply if you don't have someone to help you uh, doing it. And it's also a hassle for the municipality to to uh, go over the apply the search mode. We ask yeah. many yeah. times <laughs> the same questions: How can we use data in the new smarter ways? But also with the GDPR, the security of data. Yeah, of course. But also you have two interesting workshops that's uh, to the construction industry because through, as I said earlier, we have to have agile governments, agile mindsets in municipalities. And these two are pushing one project that we're working on now is establishing a marketplace for reuse of construction materials. And that is a business model that has to start, the ID has to start from the government. Because if not, we can't scale it. Because immediately Kunsto starts with their marketplace. Competitors will not use it. So we have to have some mutual place to establish that marketplace. With Big Lime, now on Friday, we're setting up the last workshop that we're landing this idea with the multiple parties from the commercial side, the governmental side, the academic side, to what is the business case? What can we do? So that's one part. And also in here is one of the pioneers in sun panels on official uh, on buildings. Yeah. So you're going to have a, a small part in that also on Friday. I think Moldo municipality is going to double the solar capacity within two years. It's not as big as some of the projects you have been working on, but it's quite big uh, in this area. And it's a start. You have to start somewhere. Absolutely. I've got a lot of questions and people saying, but is it enough sun in Molde? Will it generate enough power? And will it generate power when you need it? And et cetera, et cetera. Okay, let's start. I believe that. And we all have experienced fluctuating energy prices. and I want to be more independent from the energy system and how can we do it in an easy way? That's integrating solar panels on the building. And what I'm really interested in is is if we can uh, replace uh, a building material like roof panels or facade elements. Yeah. Mm. If you can replace that, they are, they are not cheap and the labor is not cheap in installing them. So if we can replace them with panels uh, that can generate power, then you can calculate the cost, the alternative cost, the extra cost, and, uh, and calculate the profitability based on the extra cost, not the old cost. And that I believe can make, the, make a huge influence on the project, yeah, on making solar panels more available and, and yeah. Yeah, we've got some philosophical alignment here. You said a couple of things that are really become, becoming more energy independent, I think is a positive. We've heard some stories of how at one point the energy in Norway was private and you have, you generate a lot of power, hydroelectric power. And at some point it went to the government and it was decided it would be a good idea to, to sell it to Europe. Wars broke out and then energy prices went sky high because of other disruptions way outside of Norway. And now people, everyday people are having to make decisions on, do I buy food or do I keep the heat on during the cold months of the year? And that's a decision we shouldn't have to force on people, especially when we have power being generated in large quantities. So I think having another alternative to to maintain some independence and give the people what they need is a very good idea. And 
has been a topic of something that I've watched a lot of TikTok videos on. So I'm no expert, but you can generate power during the limited sun that you get here. And it's been exceptionally sunny today. Yeah. Today, the one day that we spent yeah. the most time inside, it has been the sunniest <laughs> outside. With the combination of batteries and panels, you can have power every day. And even in very sunny areas like where I live in California, we only get five good hours of sun per day in our area. I can only imagine here that the number has got to be something less than five, except that Probably. it doesn't get dark until 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. And that, I don't know. I think you still can be producing, depending on which type of panels you use and the type of batteries you make, there are lots of ways to capture that power and keep it available. Yeah. And also, if we can generate more power in the summer from solar, we have more available water in the dams for the winter. Because what also made the prices explode was that we were almost running out of water at one point. And uh, so I see solar as a very good substitute to the infrastructure that we already have been in place. Mm. Yeah. So great things are going on in Mulder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll put a link to the, what, you guys have a website that we can put links to and share information. Yes. Yeah. But we like to connect with those who has passion to work with. We are not quite sure where we are going, but we are going to have fun on our way. Oh, <laughs> <So>. yes. <laughs> and yes. money. Of course. We are interested in that and have good areas for us to live in. Yeah. And you have to support the festival. I know that there is a right around the corner, a beer festival, a cool festival. Yes. Around the corner where I'm going to miss yeah. having mead, which is super sad. I'm going to miss that. So Odinga promised he's going to drink my fair share of shots. <laughs> I recognize that I'm at least two times your body weight. So that's it. Like... I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else should people know about coming to visit Molda? Where can they come to visit the center? And should they stop by when they're here? Yes, of course. Up? And you get a hug as well. Oh. And you get a hug. <laughs> we are quit uh, Corona and everything here, so it's a clean yeah. city. <laughs> it's a clean city. And uh, it's important that we're not mentioning the obvious thing that the tourists are coming to Molde to see, and it's the nature. It is the, as you said, Felipe, you came to Norway, you said Oslo, uh, but you also came to Molde and you said, finally, I can breathe. I can breathe and it's it's the air it's so clean we have fresh nature we have of course we have a lot of weather but that's only close we need so we have mountains we have a lot to take in yeah. that's what the mostly of the people are coming to mold but yeah. we're now trying to create some change in the construction industry so that's the people we want also to come to mold because their magic happens Ooh. Ooh. This is where we say hi, Dad. Hard, 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 hard. I say, sister and mean, bro and mean, poor and mean. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. <laughs> Very special thanks to my guests. I'm Felipe Engineer Manriquez. The EBFC show is created by Felipe and produced by a passion to build easier and better. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. Let's go build. <laughs>